Hey guys, this is Matt from Wystick Engineering, and today we're going to be showing you the installation of our Stage 1 Turbo Kit for the Polaris Pro R. To begin, we're going to start by removing the bed. Next, we're going to remove the two rear seats and rear panels that cover up the engine compartment. Now that we've removed the panels, you have much better access to do the install and to do your clutching. Next, we're going to drain the coolant by removing this line here and draining it down into a pan. Now that we've removed this hose to drain the coolant, we're going to remove this hose completely so later on we can replace it with a different hose in the kit. We're going to return this hose back to its original spot and tighten the worm gear clamp. Now we're going to take off the top. Next we're going to remove the PCB line that goes from the engine to the intake boot. Next we're going to remove the tube that goes from the throttle body to the air box by removing two worm clamps. Next we're going to remove the tube that goes from the air box to the intake inlet. Alright, next we're going to be removing the air box. Uh, we have two options on this one. There are two 10 millimeter bolts behind this panel. You can remove the panel, which is a lengthy process. If you don't want to touch the panel or grind into the panel, you could do that. Or we decided we we're going to cut a little access hole into the panel and just make it a lot easier. Next, we're going to remove the air box by removing these two 10 millimeter bolts. Remove the air box. Next, remove the duckbill valve from the bottom of the air box. Then remove the bracket using a T40 Torx. Then cut the zip tie. After loosening the hose clamp, remove the exhaust tube. Using a 10 millimeter, remove the bolt securing the heat shield to the header. Using an oxygen sensor tool or a 7 8 wrench or a 22 millimeter wrench, Remove the oxygen sensor from the header. Using a six millimeter Allen, remove all the header bolts.
Using a 14 millimeter, remove the bolts that secure the header to the muffler. Remove the factory gasket. Now we're gonna to move to the top of the motor and start taking out the spark plugs. Now before you do this, you're gonna to wanna to take some compressed air and clean around the boots of the coil packs just to make sure that you don't get any grit or any rocks or any debris inside of the engine once you remove the spark plugs. To remove the coil packs, you're gonna need an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket. Once the coil packs are removed, move on to removing the spark plugs using a 5 8 spark plug socket. Now we're going to install the new spark plugs that come with the kit. The spark plugs are supposed to be torqued at 12 newton meters and the coil packs are torqued to 10 newton meters. After installing the coil packs and torquing them down, now we're going to reinstall the harness. Next we're going to be installing the injectors that come with the kit, starting with cleaning around the injector ports just to be sure that you don't get any debris in the injector ports when you remove the injectors and fuel rail. When removing the fuel rail, you're gonna to wanna to relieve the pressure in the fuel rail by removing the quick disconnect. When you do this, you're gonna want eye protection and put a rag over the connection to make sure you don't get sprayed. Once you remove the eight millimeter bolts holding on the fuel rail, cut the zip ties holding the harness to the fuel rail and remove the fuel rail with the injectors installed. change out the fuel injectors, you're going to want to remove this clip retaining the fuel injector. You can do it with your fingers and then just pop the injector out. Reinstall the new injectors with a little bit of grease on the O-ring and make sure that the retaining clip goes inside the groove inside of the injector correctly. We're gonna reinstall the fuel rail the same way we took it out. Now we're gonna to torque the eight millimeter bolts holding down the fuel rail to 10 Newton meters. Lastly, to complete the fuel rail install, we're gonna return the plugs back in. And install new zip ties to secure the harness. Now we're gonna remove the T-MAP sensor by removing the eight millimeter bolt and removing the harness plug.
Now replace with the new one. Now we're gonna be installing the fans harness. And to do that, we need to remove this 13 millimeter bolt here. Once we do, we can mount it with this tab and we're gonna put the ground attached to the tab just behind it and secure it down. Installing the relay, be sure to rotate the relay around so the body of the relay is underneath this main bar here. That way it gives you clearance for the throttle body tube. Next, we're gonna take the power wire with the eyelet on it from the harness and we're going to put it on the post for the starter. In order to secure the rest of the harness for the fans, you're gonna take the blue wire and you're gonna splice it into this plug for the tail lights. If you look for letter C on the plug, it is an orange and gray wire. It's a light orange wire. Now trace the wire back in the loom to here, just before it goes down into this white tape. This loom, you're gonna cut open and find the, that orange and gray wire that we talked about. This is the one you're gonna cut, and then you're gonna take the blue wire from the harness just below and route it up into here with the butt connector. Now we're gonna be installing the boost reference adapter fitting. To do this, we need to remove this brass fitting at the bottom of the intake manifold here. Once we get that fitting off, we're going to be screwing this in by hand. And once we screw it in by hand, we're gonna see which one of the three ports drilled into the, the fitting is gonna be the one that's facing down. That's the one we're gonna be screwing in this fitting. Once we know that, we know the other two we can plug. So we can take it back out, plug the two open holes, screw this into the hole we're gonna use, and then we're gonna reinstall this fitting for good. To remove the fitting, we need to remove this hose, and then we're going to remove the fitting with an 18 millimeter wrench. Uh, when we reinstall the new fitting, it's gonna be with a 19 millimeter wrench. Now we're gonna install this fitting using a 14 millimeter wrench. Next, we're gonna be installing this oil feed fitting. To do that, we need to remove this gold Allen plug that is right down in here in the housing for the oil filter. You're gonna need a five millimeter Allen socket or Allen wrench to get in there. Then you're gonna grab a 16 millimeter open end wrench or box wrench and tighten it down. Next, we're gonna be installing the oil feed line and we're going to be using the 90 degree fitting attached to the oil feed fitting that we put in here earlier. Found one of the best ways to route the oil feed line is to come out through this area here, loop around, you can cut this zip tie and reinstall the zip tie and you can use the zip tie to go around this electrical line and this. After that, you wanna go behind this wire loom and then tuck it behind the motor across to the other side to meet up with the turbo. Now we're gonna be installing one of the turbo coolant lines. This one, we have the longer of the two rubber lines attached to it. And we're gonna be feeding it through here and it attaches down here onto the oil cooler. Now feed the line up through here 
under these hoses on top of the aluminum scatter shield and over to the other side. And it's gonna attach right down here on top of the oil cooler. Tighten with the supplied worm gear clamp. Now we're going to install the second coolant line with the shorter of the two rubber pieces attached. There's a brass fitting here right at the intake manifold and the thermostat housing, and that's what we're going to be plugging onto. Now we're going to be installing this oil return plate that gets mounted on the timing chain cover, and it is located behind this belt cover. So we need to remove these 10 millimeter bolts surrounding this belt cover. We're going to lift the cover back just a little bit and it will, it will allow us to access the cover behind it. Once you remove this belt cover here, it allows you to access this chain tensioner cover plate. You can remove this cover plate with three 8 millimeter bolts. One of them, you have to go through the pulley. There's a little groove that slides in the bolt that's just behind the pulley. Make sure you slip it in there, and then you can start your bolts. Now reinstall the belt cover. Now we're going to prep the mating surface of the manifold to the head. To do that, we're going to use a razor blade or a gasket scraper and a little bit of scotch brite. Now we're gonna be installing the manifold on the head. In order to do that, we're gonna need some high temp silicone. We do not include that in the kit. Uh, we don't recommend using your factory gasket because that can lead to boost leaks. So now we're gonna go put it on the car. To get easy, we're gonna install all the bolts with the Nordlock washers and all the bottom holes. And then we can set the manifold onto the bottom bolts and then install the top bolts, making it much easier. We're going to tighten the bolts to 60 inch pounds and then followed by 22 foot pounds and follow the torque sequence on the screen. So now we're going to be installing the heat shield for the manifold and you do that by starting with these two bolts right here and they're 10 millimeters. Now you're going to use this supplied M10 bolt and install it right here and screw it all the way in until it's about an eighth inch away from the head surface. Then take the heat shield, put it down on top of the bolt. Now we're gonna secure the heat shield using these two M6 bolts and they use a five millimeter hex socket. Using a 15 millimeter box wrench, you could slide it in through this access hole here to tighten this bolt on the head. In this kit, you're gonna find this partially assembled air box. On the back side of the air box, there is a bung. Inside the threaded bung is a plug. If you are gonna run the stock PCV system, you're gonna to need to drill out that plug, install this fitting, and then use the hose from the fitting to the top of the engine to complete your PCV system. If you choose, you could purchase our oil air separator and then there is no need to drill out the plug. For our install, we're going to be using the stock PCV system, so we are gonna be drilling out the inside of the bunk. Now we're gonna install the fitting with an 11 16th socket. In the removal process of the airbox, we told you to remove this duckbill valve. We are now gonna reuse it in the new airbox in this hole here. To do that, we're gonna remove these thumb screws and remove the lid of the airbox.
and you're gonna insert it through the inside. Push from the inside and pull from the outside until it pops out the rib and then it's installed. Now we're gonna start installing the air box. To do that, we need to start by loosening these two bolts here and here on the transmission to allow for the bracket of the air box to drop down on top of it. They are 12 millimeters and we're gonna start by removing this harness to get it out of our way. And then we're gonna get a wrench in there and back them off about an eighth of an inch. Next, we're gonna put the filter in the air box. And then we're gonna put the bracket on those two bolts we just loosened up and tighten it up. Now, to install the turbo, we're going to first put on the clamp over the in exhaust manifold, so it'll make it easier later. And then you're gonna to wanna to insert the turbo into the air box and rest it on top of the manifold. And while it's resting here, you need to get this dash six coolant line routed on the back side, and you can start this fitting. Once you secure the line on the back side of the turbo, we're gonna install the turbo by inserting the front of the turbo into the airbox and then placing the turbo on the manifold and lining up the flange and then putting the clamp on. Make sure that you only secure the clamp enough to where the turbo is snug but can still rotate slightly. Next, we're gonna secure the oil feed line. You can use a AN wrench or you can use a 14 millimeter wrench. Now secure the second coolant line to the front side of the turbo, routing it up and over the back side of the turbo behind the opening and you can use an 11 16 or if you have AN wrenches, you can use those. Now we're gonna install the oil drain line. To do that, we're gonna put the 120 degree end here and the 60 degree at the bottom of the turbo. And you can use a one inch wrench or you can use AN wrenches if you have those. Next we're going to install the air filter onto the front of the compressor cover inside the air box. And to do that, grab the filter and push it through the opening so it pushes on to the front of the compressor cover of the turbo and you're going to see the filter come through in this gap between the compressor cover and the air box. And once you got it fit on there, you can rotate the turbo and make sure everything looks all straight and nice and even. Now we're gonna install the air box lid by slipping it in here, putting these two tongues inside the bracket. and securing down the lid with the thumb screws. Now we're gonna reinstall this clutch cover exhaust tube, but before we do, we need to trim it in order to fit with the new air box that we just installed. To do that, uh, I like to use a heavy duty pair of scissors, and we are going to trim up to one, two, three ribs up from this side up.
Now we're gonna finish up the reinstallation with this zip tie. And we gotta go through these two holes right here. This hole and another one back here. And then it needs to loop around this tube. Next, we're gonna be installing our PCB hose. Included in your kit is a hose, two clamps, and some zip ties. So we're gonna start by routing it under here, under this hose, and loop it around to this fitting here. I'm gonna start by putting it on top of the, on the barb on the air box. Go ahead and push it on. Once you've done that, make sure you put a worm gear clamp over there. Then you're going to push it onto this barb here. Now we're gonna install the charge pipe from the throttle body to the intercooler. Before you do that, you need to make sure you install this plug into this port, unless you're gonna be purchasing our meth injection kit. So you're gonna insert this. Now we're gonna insert this onto the throttle body and push it down. Now you're gonna leave this loose for now so it makes it easier to push this down when you're installing the intercooler. To install the intercooler, first you're gonna to need to back these two bolts all the way out so that they're loose. So then you can get these two brackets up underneath these bolts while you're also putting these up underneath the plastic and you slide it in, making sure that you get this nipple into the charge pipe here. Now tighten down the clamp. Lastly, we're gonna connect the fans harness that we installed earlier to the fans. Next, we're gonna plumb the quarter inch plastic line from the blow off valve to the fitting up underneath the intake manifold that we put in earlier. So you're gonna do that by pushing, pushing it in this quick release here, running it along this tubing and ducking down through here and down underneath the intake manifold. 
So to install our intercooler cover panel, we're gonna need to transfer the factory twist locks from this panel to this panel. In order to do that, you're gonna flip it over to the, see the back side. You can push the clip out, grab the little washer. The washer has a slit in it. And then you're gonna pull the washer up and over the end of the clip and then remove it and reinstall it the same way on your new cover. Now we're gonna install our intercooler cover and it goes on the exact same way the factory does. You're gonna put the bottom cover on first and then this one just slips right over to the top. Put those tangs down in the bottom cover. Push it on and lock it in. Now we're gonna install the exhaust system. To do that, we're gonna start with this three inch V-band clamp we got in the kit. We're gonna remove the nut and then place it on the turbo. Then take the pipe, fish it up inside. Seat the donut on the muffler. And then reuse the stock hardware. It's a great idea to put a little dab of anti-seize on the threads. You're gonna get these started and then get the V-band clamp started. Start with tightening the V-band clamp and then finally the springs. Then you're gonna use a 14 mil wrench to tighten these up. And finally, you're gonna reinstall the factory oxygen sensor. Now that everything is bolted to the turbo, we had left these clamps slightly loose here and here for adjustment to get everything in and aligned. Now that everything's here, we can go ahead and tighten them all up. Now we're gonna install the wastegate actuator vacuum tube. To do that, we're gonna slip it above the top of the compressor housing of the turbo and there is a nipple back here on the actual wastegate actuator and you're going to just push it on. Now we're going to install the charge pipe from the turbo to the intercooler and we're going to start by attaching this vacuum hose to this 90 degree fitting here. then install the charge pipe. And tighten down all clamps.
Now we're gonna install our intake tube. In order to do that, we're gonna pre-install these silicone couplers, starting with this one up here on this barb. And this one here, down on the air box. Make sure you only push it on halfway so there's still room in here for the pipe to go inside. Now place your clamps on the open ends of each silicone coupler and install the pipe. And that's how you install the Weiss Tech Turbo Kit. Before you start it up, you're gonna to wanna to top off your fluids and reconnect your batteries.